Hey, this is Rachel with Good Behavior Beginnings, and today I wanted to talk about non-toy gift ideas. Uh, with the holiday season coming up, you might be shopping for uh, gifts, and you may not want a whole bunch more toys around in your house. So these are some of the ideas that uh, we use when we are shopping for gifts, both for our own uh, children and for nieces and nephews and other children that we shop for. Um, so hopefully you find it helpful. So the first one I would say is activity crates. Um, activity crates are generally going to be some sort of subscription service um, where something comes every three to four weeks and there's activities to uh, engage with uh and then maybe there's a final project or there's a couple of projects um and then the learner has that hands-on experience that they have one of the activity crates that we have um, done a lot with is from kiwico and this one in particular is the tinker crate um i have a video with this wooden autonomous uh, automaton there you go um and so the tinker crates are going to be one where they get to build something and put it together um the tinker crates also come with like a little uh magazine thing um that includes some more facts and uh information um about what's related, the activity, they come with the instructions on how to put it all together um, and all of the pieces that you need. Um, generally, I would say all the pieces, we haven't run into one that didn't come with the needed pieces. Um, and those are really fun. Um, my learner, especially since this semester, we have been uh, learning about engineering. So we started doing the tinker crates because those are pretty fun and you get to put something together. Another one from KiwiCo that we get is uh, Atlas crates. Actually, we we did. I think we switched from Atlas crates to the tinker crate. Um, so the Atlas crates uh, came with a specific country for each box. And in there, they had two activities. Um, so they would have, uh, this one had a woven basket and um, a, a two-player game. And again, it comes with all the pieces. It comes with additional information to read about the country and learn about it. And um, I believe it also, I think it's all wrapped up in the envelope, um, but it also comes with a little uh, magazine type thing that includes, again, more information about the country, makes it a little bit interesting and something that they can uh, keep and reference in the future. Uh, KiwiCo is really good. They have crates from like ages two and up. So there's lots of crates you can choose from. And if you get a subscription, um, you can switch between the lines at any point. So we started with, um, uh, I think it was just called the Kiwi Crate. And then we switched to the Atlas Crate. And now we switched to the Tinker Crate. And um, last year for my nieces and nephews, um, some of them got like just a one item kind of a, a kit that was holiday related that arrived near the holidays so that they could do that. And some of them got a subscription. So each month they got a new thing and you can switch the, the topic or the, the type to match their interests. Another activity crate, I would put it under activity crate, is the Highlights Top Secret Adventures. Um, so these are really cool. Um, they're again related to a particular uh, country. So this one is New Zealand. So it's got a book that's got facts that in the book um, that you need to solve the puzzles. And the idea is that you are a secret agent and you have to figure out who stole what and where it's hidden um, in the country. And you do that by solving puzzles. And sometimes they are um, things like uh, true, false, and you go back and you look through the information book. Um, sometimes they're word searches 
or um, hidden pictures. Um, and so it's a mix of a lot of different activities. And then you figure it out and it's got the answers in the back of the book. Um, and we've enjoyed that one. That's actually one that we use um, periodically throughout our homeschool. Um, but I think it would also make a really great present for um, that subscription would make a good present for anybody that's really interested in those uh, learning more about countries or travel or something like that. Um, and it's just a fun, nice activity uh, booklet to do. Um, along the lines of subscriptions would be magazines. So that has been a common uh, gift from uh, grandparents in our family to various grandchildren, um, but to have a magazine subscription. Um, now, I will say that if your learner is a little bit more tech inclined, um, th they do now have a lot of the magazine subscriptions do also have like links to here's the online version or here's the um, bonus stuff that's online. So um, that might be interesting. But even though my child does not necessarily spend a ton of time with the magazines uh, that they receive um, in the mail, uh, they love getting mail with their name on it, right? So um, a magazine is a nice way to do that. Um, some of the magazines that we have gotten um, highlights has a few different levels of their magazines, um, Ranger Rick, uh, Zoo Books, and Ask, I think is the one that we're currently getting right now. Um, so magazine subscriptions might be really nice. Again, just like the activity subscriptions, uh, it comes in the mail, uh, you know, every month-ish, and it's got the kid's name on it, so they get something in the mail for them, so that's always exciting. Um, and then, again, you know, it can be uh, something maybe more educational or a particular interest that they have. If they love animals, then you find one that's covering a lot about animals, that sort of thing. Um, audiobooks or subscriptions to the audiobook services is another good like non-toy present. Um, we have used Epic, which is um, a, an app that you can subscribe to that then gives access to a lot of books online, kids' books online. And um, many of them are audiobooks or have the read with me or read to me where it shows the pictures and the words at the same time. So that's really great um, for uh, learners, for, for kids to you know, be able to have their own like audiobook. Um, source that's really geared towards kids. Um, if they are older, then, you know, the subscriptions to any of the audiobook uh, type um, systems so that they can access their books or gift cards towards those audiobook um, uh, purchases. And then the last one that uh, we have been doing a lot lately is uh, gifting um, passes to as certain activities. So like the museum or the zoo. Um, so this has been something that might be like a good like family gift. So you give the family uh, a family zoo membership to the zoo in their area. So then they get to go to the zoo a lot. And um, that activity, you know, again, it's about the experience, not necessarily the, the toy. Um, it could be museum passes or zoo passes. Maybe it's things like an art night um, or pottery or like, um, uh, again, maybe a laser tag or mini golf or any of these like activity things, give some passes to that or, um, or, or buy the membership so that they can go an unlimited amount of times uh, during a time period, especially if you can get a good deal on like annual subscriptions. And like I said, for family passes, if there's two or three or four kids in the family and you buy something for the family, then the whole family gets those activities. And it's a nice gift. It's a nice activity that people can do together without there being a lot of toys piling up in the house. So those are my top four suggestions for non-toy gift ideas, activity crates, uh, magazines, audiobooks, 
and activity passes. Let me know if you have other ideas or things that you have found that are great non-toy gift ideas. And please feel free to share those below. Thanks.